Hey guys, it's Nick, and thanks for tuning in to Long Island Wargaming. And this is the last battle report before uh, me, Chris, and John head across New York to Crossroads, um, Spring 2014 GT. And this is the Lead Belcher Army. Now, this is going to be a game that me and Ryan had planned. And the purpose of this game was I think I needed to be humbled a little bit. Uh, I was doing very well with the Lead Belchers in our local uh, friendly gaming. And I really, really wanted a loss. I really do. I wanted to see what was wrong with the list because I've been doing so well with it. Uh, not against necessarily the most competitive lists, but they've just been doing well. So I wanted to lose this way I could poke some holes in the army. So what better than bring my old Skaven list from the original Crossroads GT from um, late last year. So Ryan's going to be playing my Skaven and he is going to try to beat the shit out of the lead belcher list this way i can uh... feel a little bit more comfortable with how i'm going to do at crossroads because i'm anticipating losing all five games because i don't think the list is great so let's get into it here it is completely painted up with a few finishing touches needed but here it is I got a nice little castle formation with the iron blasters, the three lead bullet units, some knoblars in front for redirecting and for trappers, and then the bulls off to the side just kind of covering my flank. It looks good until you skip over to this picture and you see the skaven across the battlefield. There's so many of them. The Hellpit Abomination and the Doom Wheel are kind of right here in front of me, which I'm not upset about because the Plague Monks are already all the way out on the side. They're going to have to deal with the forest so the, the furnace doesn't blow up. And when they do get to me, they have the bulls to take care of. But hopefully I can sweep my army right up through the right. This way I can head up that hill, sweep around, and uh, create a new battle front when the, the Plague Monks get there. But otherwise, shooting down the cannon, the Doom Wheel, and the Hellpit Abomination with my two Iron Blasters and all the Lead Belchers, Honestly, should be pretty easy. And this is just another shot of the battlefield. For magic, I got all the spells I needed and wanted. Chain bolt, uh, chain lightning, thunderbolt, wind blast, and harmonic convergence. Those are the spells I want during the tournament, and I got them all in this practice game. Skaven goes ahead and gets turn one. The Doom Wheel flies up like 16 inches or something ridiculous, so open target. Uh, you can also see that the Iron Blasters have a nice shot to hit both the Doom Wheel and the Hell Pit Abomination, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, getting turn one for the Lead Belchers is optimal. I can march up a little bit, not march up, but move up a little bit, take some shots, and then back up. But if my opponent gets turn one, the only thing I really need to be afraid about is some magic and or some returning uh, returning fire on me, but uh, either way, whether I get first turn or not, it won't be the end of the world. You can see the rest of the army uh, going to swipe across the side. Uh, you can see that Ryan put a lot of uh, force on the opposite side to, I guess, avoid the lead belters. I mean, I cast it up in the corner and then he put the plague monks all the way out there with uh, the clamor units that have the BSP and Grace here. So you can see he's going to take some time getting to me, but meanwhile I'll have a lot of opportunity to shoot up some of the more important stuff. Nothing worth noting in the magic phase, but the lightning, the Doom Wheel does go ahead and kill three Noblars, which is a panic test. I go ahead and pass it though, which is pretty awesome and go ahead into my turn one where I shoot this saber tusk out from behind the nine bulls and get him in a position where once the plague monks get a little bit closer I can redirect them with their frenzy. This saber tusk goes ahead and shoots out also and he'll go after the lightning cannon uh, which will be nice. I don't have to worry about shooting it. I can go fight it. So you can see here during the rest of my moves I get some noblars ahead this way I can keep the Iron Blaster's busy in case the Doom Wheel somehow does survive, but I'm pretty optimistic I'll be able to break it down with the three Lead Belcher units and the Iron Blasters, and even Chain Lightning and Thunderbolt. I roll up a four for Winds of Magic. Ryan has two or three dice, which is uh, nice for him. Uh, I decide to go ahead and four dice Chain Lightning onto the Hellpit Abomination to try to sneak some wounds in, and if I bounce, maybe I'll go onto those Giant Rats and cause some panic tests amongst the Slaves and the Hellpit Abomination, since he's actually not immune to Psychology. Uh, the problem is, is his Grace here is so far away that it would actually work, but uh, I do a wound, I believe, on the Hellpit Abomination, and it does not bounce. So between all my other shooting, I'm actually able to go ahead and 
kill the Doom Mill, which is great. However, the Iron Blasters are not able to do any wounds to the Helpit Abomination, which is very discouraging. And the other Lead Belcher unit that did shoot at the Helpit Abomination was unable to get any wounds past its regen saves. This is what the battlefield looks like at the end of my turn. So, on this given turn 2, you can see the Helpit Abomination goes and leaps forward, but not enough to get in touch with those Noblars, which would allow him to ping Pong forward into my Lead Belchers. So, there will be no leapfrogging this turn. And the rest of the force just kind of moves forward. I'm really not looking forward to dealing with those Plague Monks. I'm going to try uh, at all costs to get him to uh, redirect or just... I just I'm going to try to stay out of combat with them entirely. Once I can clear out the other stuff, uh, the other big stuff, I'll take a cannon shot into the uh, furnace a couple times. And here we go. Here is the rest of the movement phase for uh, Ryan. And uh, you can see he's closing in. So I'm a sucker for plague magic. Uh, Ryan went, actually went ahead and rolled dice in both lores, which is great. He actually rolled up Scorch, with his, which is an excellent spell. Uh, and he knows the flaws of this army because he's seen it in its development process. Enough to know that Scorch, uh, which is a spell that does, doesn't, doesn't scatter, it does strength 4 uh, hit and uh, causes an automatic panic test. So this placement is well thought out. It's going to cause two Noblars to panic, and as long as he can do a wound to the Lead Belchers, cause that unit to panic too, which is a pretty smart move. He proceeds to do a wound onto one of the Lead Belchers, two wounds onto the Noblar unit to the left, and then four to the right. Luckily, I am able to roll panic texts like a champ and keep my Lead Belchers alive, but one of the Noblar units though uh, decided to run off the battlefield, so uh, oh well, they don't cause panic to other Noblar units or to Lead Belchers or anything. They're they're great like that, so they run off. Uh, at least I have my Ogre still in the battlefield. Now that spell came with a price, of course. Uh, this was Irresistible Forced, and a large template strength 10 is everything I could have ever asked for. So Ryan goes ahead and does his miscast. Hen kills 20 clan rats, which is funny, along with the Warfighter, which is great. Uh, also, I must say, it feels nice looking at this army as it comes towards me, because as much as I know it's going to crush me, those models came out really nice. I'm really happy with them. Check out those Plague Monks. I like the guy with the book there. Um, I'm pretty happy with how this army came out, so uh, it's cool to have two of my painted armies fight each other. Also worth noting, the Gracier actually suffered a wound. He failed his ward save. So I'm looking at this photo, and I'm like, well, it's Ryan's turn, so I don't remember miscasting. And then I look to the right there, I'm like, there's my freaking Slaughtermaster. What the hell is this? Nothing on the battlefield has the large template. Uh, no war machines have the large template. And then I was like, oh, yeah, Skaven has the Tomb Rocket. And I totally forgot about that. And this thing is devastating as hell, which is why I love to use it and understand why people, you know, tend to not like it at times. But, yeah, so Ryan goes ahead and kills... Uh, two ogres by dealing five wounds, which is a panic test. And Ryan knows how to abuse this army because it has no BSB, and it has leadership eight. So, with that being said, I panic off the battlefield with a uh, leadership nine roll, so that wasn't a surprise. And that's the one thing about this army that I need to make sure I c avoid. So, with a 250-point unit that just ran off the battlefield, I have to go ahead and make some crazy moves. So I go ahead and issue a charge onto the Clan Rat unit that's ahead there with the BSB and the Grace here, in hopes to just kill some heroes and cause some panic tests and, uh, you know, cause some trouble. So I'm going in on an all-in here. I go ahead and roll up a 9 and make it, and you can see I have the Saber Tusk uh, set up to realign the Plague Monks so they cannot get a charge in the flank of the bulls with the clan rats with the giant rats as a uh, charge also i also made this charge too i needed a nine with my swift stride and i got it and it kind of rubbed ryan the wrong way he wasn't too happy about me making that and here's a shot of just the remaining moves i go ahead and move up the trappers to let him let the help it get a you know, real close to me this way when it comes time to overrun. He doesn't get um, into the other Noblars, but also uh, it decreases the amount of um, space in between, well, it increases the amount of space in between us and so he doesn't get me on an overrun. The Lead Belchers are going ahead, the Iron Blasters are going ahead and kind of sideswiping along the flank to get a good shot of, you know, the 
help in abomination, but also the furnace when it comes time. Uh, a quick thing to go back to, when that unit fled off the board, that made me realize that this army does have a second floor that's just being so close to the battle line. I just don't have much room to flee, so uh, to the board edge, I should say. So during uh, magic, I roll up a harmonic convergence, which will be helpful in taking down the Hellpit. However, the Iron Blasters and the Lead Belchers are unable to cause enough wounds to take them down. So the ward save, the regen save, was able to keep them alive, and the cannons really didn't do their job. So this is the combat that the bulls got themselves into. I was able to deal some damage to the heroes, not kill either of them yet, but I also did enough damage to the uh, clan rats to make me happy. He is leadership 10 with a reroll, so he goes ahead and sticks. The Saber Tusk is a champ and takes down the Lightning Cannon no problem. With Skaven turn 3, the Plague Monks go ahead and go into the um, Saber Tusk to clear him out after the Giant Rats go ahead and make a charge into the flank of the Bulls. Uh, Ryan did forget about these guys on turn 2, so we rolled them up on turn 3 and they show up with their poisoned slings. Not fun. And here's just the shot of the battlefield after Ryan's moves. The slaves are just kind of chilling out. I'm not really afraid of them. Uh, I, I do have to deal with those gutter runners. But uh, I'm still feeling all right. I mean, let's see how the bulls do. If the bulls can pull off a, a win over there and run down the general, uh, I think I can pull this game. So in Magic, uh, I'm not sure I remember Winds of Magic roll, but uh, Ryan does go ahead and get to Crack's Call off onto my uh, unit here, which is pretty nasty. Uh, he does end up doing a wound to the hero that's in the second rank, but he does also kill two ogres, so I'm down a couple guys, which is going to be a little messy in combat. Uh, I mean, I still have enough bulls to do some damage. I will focus down the Grace here and the BSB, but man, that's uh, that was a nasty little move there. In shooting, Poison Slings end up doing 7 wounds to this Lead Belcher unit. Ouch. The Help and Abomination runs down those Noblars and just falls an inch short of this Lead Belcher unit, so hopefully I can light them up this time around. In the rest of combat, the good news is, is I was able to focus down the Grey Seer and kill him off, but that was after taking a substantial amount of wounds from the Clan Rats. Uh, he passes his fear tests, no problem, but with his spears in combat, he's actually able to get a lot of attacks onto me, and although I'm toughness 4, I've got no armor, so he actually does a handful of wounds, but at least the general is dead, and uh, I do lose combat, and I run. Uh, in my Ogre turn 3, I actually end up rallying these guys, so they could be just yet another roadblock for those clan rats doing anything effective this game. Or any more effective, I should say. So, here's the rest of the moves for my turn. Um, you can see the Saber Tusk getting back into action. Maybe he'll go deal some trouble on that bunker unit that's by the impassable. Uh, the Iron Blasters are just kind of chilling out, and the Noblars are going towards the Slaves just to create a little buffer in between them and the Iron Blasters. Um, and if he goes ahead and charges me, that's a lot of difficult terrain tests. So, uh, The one Iron Blast unit, not quite sure what I was thinking or what my plan was at this moment in time. I go ahead and turn them around to shoot at the... Um, gutter runners. Uh, what I should have done is just kept them facing forward and just took out the butcher and maybe did some chain lightning on them but uh, you know what they go ahead and uh, you know go ahead and do chain lightning in the magic phase anyway but I could have done that without turning them around uh, and the chain lightning ends up doing enough damage to kill three or four of them and then chain lightning or thunderbolt I should say finishes them off so I could have gotten away with not moving the iron, uh, the lead belchers back at all to face the gutter runners, but um, that's all in hindsight. So these lead belchers at full strength, eight guys go ahead and unload into the close range help and abomination, and Ryan rolls so many regens. I'm only able to get two more wounds onto him for a total of three, and the iron blasters don't get anything in regen both shots. Ryan goes ahead and takes advantage and escape in turn 4 of my scattered troops. So we have some giant rats versus noblars. Pretty silly. And here's the flank charge from the slaves. I should have not ignored them like I did. And uh, I'm going to have to suffer the uh, penalty from that. 
Ryan goes ahead and moves this guy in, and I reminded him to roll his, you know, three die, uh, three d6, just in case he rolls three sixes and blows up. But uh, he doesn't, and we go in for some impact hits. This charge happens, and the plague monks are getting ready to sweep the field. They have spent a lot of time getting to this position, and it's the best position that they could be in right now. So I'm kind of screwed once those bulls are dead. And here is the shot of the battlefield uh, of uh, Ryan's turn. So the slaves went ahead and charged those Noblars. Five of those guys pulled off from difficult terrain tests. And that's where the engineer is too. So I actually have a chance with the other slave units because I make way with my hero when, you know, I am ogres and there is no longer a um, Gracier. So they are leadership five. So I do have a chance of breaking them, but uh, the rest of the game doesn't look that good. No surprise here, these guys end up fleeing. However, there is uh, no charge down. He doesn't want to chase them down and get in the way of the plague monks, so he'll clean them up next turn by making them flee again. And the uh, clan rats pass their test to chill out and not pursue. So I thought I had a chance here, but these guys end up losing uh, due to the flank and static combat res so that kind of seals the deal when the butcher and his uh, unit start running the slaughtermaster I should say um, it's gonna be a little rough so uh, at this point I'm not feeling too great and this is the last shot of the game the help at abomination killing two ogres I'm not quite sure if these guys stick or not but at that point I tell Ryan this game is a success. I lost with the lead belchers. Ryan got to play Skaven, which was something different for him. And uh, I got to see some flaws with the army, which were some flaws that I already knew. I already knew that the freaking lack of leadership and BSB was going to be an issue. But if my opponents, who at Crossroads are going to be very surprised with this list, they're not going to know what to do, they probably won't exploit that. They probably won't take advantage of the leadership. And honestly, they're just going to see so many cannons, I'm hoping that they just don't know what to do and don't run at me, which gives me a couple turns to react, um, to implement a plan, and to uh, obtain some objectives. So that is the last uh, home practice game for the Lead Belcher Army. We're packed up and headed towards Crossroads. So the next game will be a practice game with NerdHammer.net. Uh, feel free to check out their um, blog at NerdHammer.net, but also their YouTube channel. Uh, Casual is the name of the YouTube channel, I think. Casual1414 or Casual4141. I forget at the current moment, but hey, thanks for watching, and uh, see you guys in the next video.